In this video, we're going to talk about the new support types for fused filament fabrication in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about the March 2022 update to Fusion 360 manufacturing, and specifically additive manufacturing. There are a whole host of additive manufacturing updates, but the one I'm going to cover is going to be fused filament fabrication supports. So first, the Wolf model that we see here, if you go to the description, there's a link to this model in Sketchfab, as well as credit to the designer that created it. This model was not one that I created, so I want to make sure that we do give credit there. Next, what we have on the screen here is an SLA, specifically a Formlabs Form 3L printer setup, with the bar support using the tree type structure. Now this tree type structure can be applied to fused filament fabrication models in Fusion 360. To see what that looks like, let's go ahead and take a look by creating a new setup. I need to start by selecting a machine. I'm gonna filter by FFF machines, and then I'm gonna simply select the Creality Ender 5 Plus. This is just an FFF machine. It doesn't have to be this one. It simply needs to be big enough for your part. This is a great part because of the overhangs and the various angles. It makes it really easy for us to play around with some of the settings. I'm gonna use all the default settings, but note that in the past, to alter the way that supports were created for FFF type machines, you would have to go into the print settings to be able to do that. Right now, we're gonna select OK. And once this is created, we need to select our material. I'm gonna do ABS with 1.75 filament. And now we have our machine boundary as well as the model. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna take a look at the new options for supports. We've got solid volume support, which is typically how supports are created in most of the FFF slicers. And then we've got this solid bar support. Now the main benefit of having these options in Fusion 360 is we have more control over how our models are supported. I won't be looking at solid volume support. We're specifically gonna be looking at solid bar support. Once we come in here, there are a couple options and things that I wanna note. First, by default, we can select the entire model and just use support overhang angles. But we actually have control to select individual faces as well, and we'll circle back and look at that in just a minute. Next, we need to determine the overhang angle. Now, this is gonna be based on your model and relative to a vertical plane. So I'm gonna leave 40 degrees for now and just see what we get. Next in the general section, we've got our anchor density. I'm gonna use sparse. And then we've got bars on cluster geometry. So you can see that we've got down points, bars at corners, medial axis, and bars at borders. For any of these, you can simply hold the cursor over the checkbox and get a tool tip showing you what the difference is with it deselected or selected. I'm gonna use the default settings. Next, we have connection to bouquet structure. Now this tree structure is gonna determine the branching, and this means that the vertical pipes are gonna to start to spread out, or we can set this to none and just have the vertical pipes or keep that tree structure. We also have project bar to platform, and we have an angle limit. We're gonna leave that turned on for right now. Next, we have bar properties. Now, we have a default size, or we can do a custom size if you really wanna hone in on it. We have our bar shape, which can be solid, or again, a custom solid, and we have breakpoints. I'm gonna leave these off for now, but note that we have on, and then we have offsetted to part. So these will help us reduce the amount of post-processing that's needed. And then we have pad on platform. So let's say okay, and let's just see what we get. So the first thing that happens is we get these vertical bars and they are branching out based on our tree setting. They do have small pads at the base and you'll note that they are hitting the model in various places. Part of the reason that we're not getting them all over the model, especially in the back, is because of the angle. The back of the part is at roughly 48 to 50 degrees. So I'm gonna reset this to 55 degrees and just simply say okay and take a look at the results. At 55 degrees, you can see it's starting to go all the way up into the ears. And based on that maximum angle that we have, it is able to project it down and go all the way to the pad. So if we want more support, but we don't wanna keep increasing that angle to a point where we start to have just way too many supports, 
we can do this manually by adding additional supports. So I'm going to come back in, I'm going to edit this down to 50 degrees, regenerate it, and now you can see it's omitting the ears, and we might potentially need to add a bit more support to the backside. So one of the benefits of this is we can do this manually. Once you've honed in on whatever your support structure needs to look like, you've made all the adjustments to it, for example, the breakpoint on part, once we're done setting up all of those various parameters, we can come back with another solid bar support, but this time we can focus on specific angles. In this case, I'm going to say all the way up to 60 degrees using all the default settings and say OK. Now you'll notice at 60 degrees, it's not able to create anything. So let's go ahead and redo this and let's say up to 70 degrees. Say OK, and you can see now we're generating it based on those faces. And again, if we want to have any support inside the ears, we just go ahead and create another solid bar support. And this time, make sure that we have our face selections where we want those supports. We're going to increase this value. In this case, I'm going to go up to 62 degrees and say OK. At 62 degrees, nothing is being generated. And again, we can go back and we can make measurements on these faces, or we can start to have additional support options. You'll notice in this case, one of those supports goes all the way down to the base, and I don't really want that. So I'm going to go to my last option for my bar properties and turn off pad on platform and say OK. You see that the bar still goes all the way down. So the last thing I need to do is make some adjustments to some of the other settings. We're going to turn off project bar to platform, say OK, allow it to regenerate, and now it goes directly to the model. Once again, you'll note that we do have to adjust some of the settings depending on the post-processing needs. But the benefit of being able to do this individually is we can go back and make these changes at any point in time. Once we're happy with the results, you can see now we've got these breakpoints at both sections of the model, which makes it easy for us to remove and post-process. And again, edit one more time, change this to on part, and now it's even easier for us to remove. You can see we've got those small sections directly at the model in both sides, making it very easy for us to break off these supports. So this is a great way for us to begin to get a little bit more control on the FFF style machines, most of which can be purchased and are considered desktop units now. Now it's not universally true, but most of the desktop units that we have at home are going to be using this FFF style. So it's important that you check in to Fusion 360, check into the machine library, see what machines are supported because a lot of new ones have come online with this update. So see if the machine that you have or you're using is supported and if you can take use of this. So if you have used this before or you plan on using it, please leave me a comment. I'm interested to see what kind of results people are getting from this. And if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.